today I'm lucky enough to be on the north end of Isla at the Bunahaban distillery and I'm speaking to Paul. Pleased to meet you Paul. And you Alistair, nice you, to see you. Uh, unfortunately I don't know much about Bunahaban and I was wondering if you could fill me in uh, with the, when it started, what, what whiskies are made here. Yes, yeah, certainly, certainly. Well, the distillery was built in 1881, um, and the reason that we're here is first of all, Bunahaban itself is Gaelic for mouth of the river. Mouth of the river, right. And the river that it refers to is the River Margadale, which lies about 800 metres to the north of us. Uh -huh. And it's from that river that we get our water. Right. And we're unique on Isla in that we're the only distillery which uses the same water for the whole of its production process, uh -huh. even through to when you have a dram at the distillery you will be cutting your dram with the same water that we use for production. I, I, I may try that later on, <laughs> I may if I get I'm a chance. I'm sure, yes, think, I'm yeah. sure, yes. And um, what, what, what sort of whisky is it? Is it, is it the peaty whiskies here? Is it less than that? Or what, what sort of style do you do? Well, Bunnahaven now is, is well known, best known for unpeated whiskies. Ah. But in fact, from 1883, when we started production, through to 1963, we did produce peated whiskies here, but all of it went for blending. Ah, but in right. 1963, the decision was made to stop producing peated whiskies and uh, to produce an unpeated whisky. Mm -hmm. And in parallel with that, what happened was the plant's capacity was doubled. Mm -hmm. and, but over the last few years, what we've been doing we, is we've actually been producing some a uh, small quantity of peated spirit. So what we're doing is, in many respects, we're going back to going our back. roots. Right. So yeah. in a few years' time, uh, or over the next few years, hopefully you'll be seeing some peated expressions of uh, Bonnerhaven. Excellent. I mean, uh, so 1963, big changes back then mm -hmm. from producing for blends to unpeated for single malt, I take it, yeah? Well, the first uh, single malt that we produced was a 12-year-old in 1979. Right. And since then, we've added to that in terms of the core range, an 18-year-old and a 25-year-old. Right. Those are both unpeated whiskies. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, a rather unusual spirit called Toychuk, or whiskey called Toychuk. Toychuk, what does that mean? Uh, it's Gaelic for smoky. Smoky, yeah. Yes, okay. and the flavour and everything is in the clues in the name. The clues in the name, <laughs> the there we go. That's, the name. Right. that's right. Okay. And that is um, a whiskey that is made using both peated and unpeated whiskies. Right. It's quite unusual, but it's very popular. Oh, right. Okay. Yes, yes. But we also have uh, another uh, peated whiskey called Cruetbonia, which means peat stack. Now that's so available either only from the distillery or uh, in travel retail in airports. Oh, right, so okay. if you see it, that's the place to buy that's it, unless you're right? fortunate enough to come and see us. Mm -hmm. um, but that's made using purely peated whiskies. Right. So the toy chip comes in at between 15 and 17 parts per million. Right, and okay, the crew right. of Boner is between 35 and 40. Uh, so he more heavily one It is, one. Yeah. yes. Uh -huh. Yes, both very popular, but strangely enough, the Toychuk, which is the less peatier of the two, is actually very popular with people who like very peaty whiskies. One no, of those strange things. Just, just <laughs> one of those quirks, there we it go. It was. Right. Only the other day we had a group in from Slovakia for a tasting and one of the guys had the Toychuk and I thought on his face, mm, he's not too keen on this. Yeah. But by about 20 minutes later, and even after he'd had the crew at Vonia, uh -huh. uh, because he liked peated whiskies, he did decide of the whiskies that he tried that day, uh -huh. his favourite actually was the toy chip. And that's the there one that go. all they all went away and bought. Uh, they all bought that. <laughs> they did, yes. Well, yes. well I tell you, I'm, I'm really enjoying my time here, but this is a beautiful... Uh, you're here all the time, but for me yes. to come here, yes. this is a beautiful place. Mm. And you can see why it's a beautiful, you know, pure spirit you get mm. from here. Mm. You just look at the, the environment around mm. you. And do, do you mature the whiskey here as well? Do you get the sea air in it as well? Or? You do, yes, yes. I mean, the warehouses are, as you can see, they're all within uh, 50 to 100 yards of the, yeah, the of the shore. Yeah. So we've got the, the sea out here. So over the time that the casks are here with us, then obviously there will be quite a maritime influence on the on the whiskies as they yeah. mature in the casks here. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's all I can ask you for just now, Paul. It's so a pleasure. I thank you very much for your it's time. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed and for coming. Uh, I think I'll pop upstairs and buy a bottle just now. So Certainly. So that's us being to the Bunahaban Distillery. Beautiful place in the north of Isla. I have now, I have now got my bottle, which I'm not telling my wife how much it cost, of 18-year-old Bunahaban. I had a beautiful drama this with Paul. Thoroughly enjoyed my time here. So, until next time from the Drinking Man's Guide to Scotland, see you.